It's Yankee baseball time again. The Yankees versus the Boston Red Sox from Yankee Stadium, brought to you by P. Valentine and Sons, Brewers, the famous three-ring Valentine beer, the crisp refresher, and the Atlantic Refining Company and your friendly Atlantic dealer who offers you Atlantic Imperial gasoline, the gasoline to keep your car on the go. Your host for the first half of the game, the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer, the man who keeps your car on the go. This is Bob Delaney speaking to you from Yankee Stadium in New York, where, at long last, we might say, opening day is at hand. After two days of rain, the weatherman has cooperated to the extent that it is not raining, but the temperature is no higher than 42 or 43 degrees, a slate gray overhead with a distinct threat of rain, though the weatherman says that won't be a factor until later this afternoon. And the Yankees, very anxious to get opening day into the books, are playing ball today against the Boston Red Sox. For the last 25 minutes, we have been entertained by the ceremonies that are always attendant to opening day at any baseball park, whether it be at Yankee Stadium or in the most remote minor league operation. The raising of the flag, and of course here at the stadium, also the ceremony of raising the Nash, the American League Championship pennant, which flies very proudly just under Old Glory in straightaway center field. Yankee Stadium, as we look out over it, is in excellent shape. It has been graced by a brand new scoreboard, which uh, has taken the place of the familiar one in the same area. This a gigantic scoreboard that I think outdoes any scoreboard in the major leagues with just about every bit of information on it that you could possibly want to know. At home plate, the four umpires are going through the ritual with the two managers, Casey Stengel of the Yankees and Mike Higgins of the Boston Red Sox, going over the ground rules, and they'll be going over thoroughly today, of course, as they are at the beginning of each season, pointing out all the various aspects that go into the ground rules here at the stadium. The pitchers today will be, as advertised, Friday and again on Saturday. Bullet Bob Turley will go for the Yankees, and he'll be opposed by Tom Brewer of the Boston Red Sox. The umpires have broken now from their conference and have moved to their position, so let's check the starting lineups for today's game. For the Red Sox, it'll be Don Budden leading off, playing shortstop. Pete Reynolds at second base. Batting third, Gene Stevens in center field. At first base, a newcomer to the Red Sox, but a familiar hand in the American League, Vic Wirtz, playing first base. Jackie Jensen will be in right field. Frank Malzone at third base. Sammy White will catch, and Tommy Brewer will pitch. Brewer has been a better-than-average American League pitcher, but his success against the Yankees has been on the uh, rather meager side. However, this is another year, and Brewer is hopeful to shake that Yankee jinx. For the world champion New York Yankees, Hank Bauer leads off playing in right field. Seaburn in left field. Mickey Mantle in center as the Yankees take the field. Batting fourth, Yogi Berra, the catcher. Gil McDougal at second base. Marv Thronberry will play first base. Andy Curry at third base. Bobby Richardson will be the shortstop. And pitching for the Yankees gentleman who received just prior to the start of the game the Cy Young Award for the outstanding pitcher in the American League, Bob Turley, who was a monument of strength with the Yankees last year, not only in the regular season, but also very prominently in the World Series. Well, the Yankees have positioned themselves, and we're just a moment or two away from the start of the ball game. Had the Yankees not been able to get today's ball game in, they would have had to wait until the 25th of this month for their opening game, as the Yankees now will go on the road for two weeks, not returning until a week from yesterday, when they'll play a quick three-game series with the Baltimore Orioles at the stadium, a Saturday game, which will be Ladies' Day, and a doubleheader on Sunday. And then the Yankees make their first trip west. So the Yankees had... Uh, that additional reason to want the weatherman to let them play today, and he just barely has let them play. The weather might be uh, much more favorable for football today, and as a matter of fact, the championship game played here between the Baltimore Colts and the New York football giants was in weather much more 
befitting baseball than uh, today's. However, there will be much better weather en route later. It seems that opening days are quite often played in weather just like this. Bob Turley has come in from right field where he'd been warming up in the Yankee bullpen and is now taking his warm-up pitches with Yogi Berra. Checking out on the scoreboard. And it is a mighty scoreboard, something to see when you come here. In the American League, Cleveland is playing in Kansas City. We'll have nothing on that game for a while. Baltimore and Washington have already been postponed. I understand it was postponed because of snow. Chicago and Detroit are underway. In the first inning, there is no score. In the National League, Cincinnati and Philadelphia are playing a doubleheader. The first game has gone two innings. There is no score. Los Angeles playing at Chicago. We have nothing on that yet. The weather at Pittsburgh was unfavorable for baseball, and as a result, the Milwaukee-Pittsburgh game was postponed, and San Francisco will play at St. Louis, and they'll be getting underway in approximately 20 minutes. Now the throw has been made down to second base. And Don Button is announced as the leadoff hitter for the Boston Red Sox. And so it's play ball as the Atlantic Refining Company and your neighborhood Atlantic dealer are set to bring you Yankee baseball as they will throughout the 1959 season. Bob Turley looking in to pick up his sign from Yogi Berra. Don Button squares away in the batter's box. And here's the first pitch of the ball game. In for a call strike. Brand new infield of 7,200 square feet of Marion Blue. Right field is the only area that they didn't have time to uh, resod, and the resodding of that will begin tomorrow. Charlie's second pitch is a changeup on the inside for ball one. One ball, one strike. Jack Burns coaching at third. Dell Baker coaching at first for the Red Sox. And this is the first batter of the first game. Curve low outside. Barra short hops it out of his ball, too. Two balls, one strike. Curley had a very sound spring pitching. He's in wonderful shape. He won about all the awards a fellow could win in the offseason. I feel around toward left on Button. The right hand hitting shortstop. Fastball is low inside, and it is ball three, and Curley's behind three and one. For the Yankees in um, the singles opening day defensive array, Curley pitching, Barra catching, Thronberry at first base. In fact, Thronberry has quite a dry sense of humor. Saw him in the dugout. To see, the pitch is in for strike three two. Before the ball game started, and he said, Well, he said, this would be a real mild day, wouldn't it, for Alaska? McDougal at second, playing a very deep second base. He's back uh, on the uh, right center field grass. Richardson's opening in short, carry at third. The pitch is swung on, foul back. 3 2. Stephen out in left field, and he's wearing glasses. Now, he wears them all the time under the doctor's instructions. If he's going to use them, you might as well use them consistently. Mantle is in his familiar spot in center, and Bauer in his equally familiar area out in right. Charlie ready for his 3-2 pitch. Again, delivers low inside ball four, and he walks the first man. Base on balls, and the first man up is on. Actually have no score. Now we have Pete Reynolds, who lost out at the very end of it last year to his teammate Ted Williams for the batting championship. It was decided the last day of the season. And the thumper just kept on thumping. Runnels, crouch hitter, left-hand batter. Infield is up, ready for a butt if that's Higgins' play. Curly delivers. It's a ball that sinks too low under the knee. Ball one. Very happy to tell you on opening day, we have no change at our radio control. Pappy Durkin. Well, this is spring training camp. is sitting right here. We do have a new opening day statistician, though, Pete Callison, and we welcome him to the family. Pitch is a fastball outside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. 
Charlie always does a lot of labor when he pitches because he throws a great number of pitches. It doesn't bother him to throw 120, 130, 140. That's his type of pitching. He's walked his first batter. This is opening day. It was supposed to have been Friday, then supposed to have been yesterday, and now it's today. Charlie checks his runner with a head bob. Pitches. Fastball over for a strike. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Runnels had his uh, best season last year. Hit 322. Right up to the last day, fighting for the batting championship. Low outside ball three. Charlie in a hole. Three and one. Gee, the big new scoreboards are beauty. Well, you don't need any uh, glasses to help you read that. We have no score. Charlie pitching deliberately. Walked his first batter behind 3-1 on the second. Pitches and Ronalds hits a ground ball to second. Like Dougal up with Old Richards with one out to throw to first. Double play. So Ronalds going after the 3-1 pitch. Hit it about uh, three-quarter speed down the second, and it was Mike Dougal to Richardson. And on over to Thornberry at first for the DP. Two men out. And we have Gene Stevens. He jammed his thumb at the base, his, his right thumb, uh, about a dozen days ago. The hand is not right, but uh, with Williams not here, Stevens is in there. He's a big, tall, rangy fellow. He's about 6'4", 6'5", left-hand hitter. Curly throws him a change of speed, uh, pitch high outside, let him see it, ball one. Outfield pulled around for the right. Curve ball is low, outside, ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Eddie Rommel working uh, balls and strikes. Had first a long career as a pitch outside ball three. Long career as a pitcher, pitch for Connie Max Athletics. He's been around this league a long time. Call strike, got the three one pitch over. Rommel is the um, second veteran umpire in the league. Bill Summers started in this league in 33. There's a ground ball hit to the right side. McDougal is up with it. Over to first in time for the out. And it's one, two, three. Rommel started in this league in 38. Two. Nothing across. And the score at the end of the first half of the opening inning of opening day. The Red Sox nothing, and the Yankees getting ready to hit. You know, the nicest thing about spring is longer daylight to make going places and seeing things in your car so much easier. So make the most of spring daylight driving. Fill her up with Atlantic Imperial gasoline. That's the gasoline that keeps your car lively with all the pep and power your engine can deliver. You like the smooth hum it gives your motor. That's music to a motorist's ear. So drive in at your Atlantic dealer. He's the man who keeps your car on the go. Just say Atlantic Imperial and get the gasoline that's better to start with, better to stay with, and economical in the long run. Bob Turley's control off just a trifle in the first inning, but nonetheless, he was able to get the big pitch into Pete Runnels on the 3-1 pitch and get Pete to bang into a quick double play. And then three and one on Gene Stevens. Got Stevens hit an identical ball to second base. Pattern of Turley over the past two years has been... If he has trouble, it usually comes in the first inning. If he gets off the hook in the first two innings or so, Bob's control usually comes back to him and he pitches the strong ball game that we're associated with, that he's associated with. 
Well, the Yankees now on offense will set up Hank Bauer, Norm Seaburn, and Mickey Mantle in the bottom of the first inning. The wind today is blowing from left to right rather briskly. With the flag being spread out at right angles as we look out the straightaway center field. Tommy Brewer blowing on his pitching hand, picking up the sign from Sammy White, and set to deliver the first pitch. Now here's Red. Power right hand hitter. Brewer right hand pitcher delivers a fastball just outside waist half of all one. No score. If you just joined us, Charlie walked his first batter. Got the next one to bang into a double play and the third one to roll out. McDougal starting both of those plays. Second base. The ball one pitch is low outside a curve ball two. Two and up. The Red Sox uh, had just ideal spring training weather down at Arizona. I understand they had 45 days and not a cloud. I might say it wasn't exactly that way in Florida. But then on their way home, uh, Barris broke out on the squad, and about half of them have been quite sick. Pitches in there for a strike, two and one. We told you earlier, um, pitcher Bowes field, catcher Sullivan, and outfielder Renner have been put on a train today and sent up to Boston. The 2 1 pitch to Bowes is swung on and missed. There was a slider, and Hank went for it. Two balls, two strikes. We have a pretty strong wind that is blowing in from left field and going toward right. It's a crosswind across the top of the stand, judging by the flags. The 2-2 pitch, swung on and missed. He broke it over there. It was sinking, and Bauer cut on it, didn't get it. One up, one down. Strike out for Tom Brewer. Now we have Marv Steven, who hit a flat 300 last year without glasses, and saying as well as he, if he could see the man without glasses for 300, I have better hopes that with glasses he can see him better this year. Steven, a left-hand hitter, had a very steady, a fine spring. Out the around toward right. Brewer delivers a fastball, clipping the inside corner for a strike, just under the hand. Rommel back of the plate, Stevens at first, Knapp at second, Rice at third. It's an overcast, cold afternoon, leaden skies up above. Curve low inside, ball one, one and one. The spinners are coming down the ballpark and standing around and not being able to get the season underway. I think got on everybody's nerves the last couple of days. I had a notion they were going to play this one today, no matter what. Sort of had to. And considering everything, I think we have an f- excellent crowd. 1-1 one, one pitch, curve low inside to the shin. Ball two. Two and one. Stephen has become an increasingly good judge of a pitch ball. Stands there as a quiet bat. Quiet, rangy, rub on sort of a fella. The pitch is half swung on, fouled off. Tried to check too late on the sinker. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Steven out of the box, gets in. Sets his spikes. Brewer doesn't waste much time. Slender, trim, neat working pitcher. Takes a sign, promptly pumps, pumps again. Delivers, and as a ball hits sharply through the second baseman to right field, and Stephen is on. He hit that one through. It's in the hole between first and second. Runnels came over, got his glove, toward the ball, but the ball bounced up over the glove and went out into right field. And it is the first hit of the year at Yankee Stadium. So Seaman, single to right, and he's on, and up steps Mickey Mantle. Mantle hit 304 last year. The only batter in the American League to get 100 walks. He got 129. We have no score. I feel deep toward right on Mickey, who's hitting left-handed against this Boston right-hander. A change-up is high outside for a ball.
Wirtz holding first base against Seban, who's the first runner here in the first inning. Brewer in position. Deals. Puts it in for a strike. But the knees on the inside. Just the start of the ball game and just the start of the season as far as the stadium is concerned and as far as these two ball clubs are concerned. Brewer comes set, checks his runner. Pitches. Mantle swings and hits a high foul back out of play. Strike two. Looking around the big new scoreboard. Milwaukee at Pittsburgh in the National League has been uh, postponed. Baltimore at Washington in the American League has been postponed. Chicago's at Detroit. They're playing with Chicago leading 3 0 end of two innings. Since that is at Philadelphia in the National League, and no score at the end of two there, and that uh, gets you up to date. Los Angeles is going to start at Chicago and San Francisco at St. Louis. Pitches numbers are up. We'll run it all down for you at the end of the inning. Brewer pitches one and two. Mantle swings as a ball driven straight out to center fielder Stevens, who makes the catch. He just had to back up two steps, never having to take his eye off the ball. So it's a line drive shot right at the center fielder, and we have two out. And the redoubtable Mr. Barra. Hit 260 last year. And Barra's got so many records that if we start to read them off, we'd miss a lot of play by play. He's truly one of baseball's all-time great catchers. They play him in the right field, of course, and drastically. Stephen leads our first two out, no score. Curveball is in for a strike. Nothing in one. Make no mistake about it, Brewer has a very good curve. He and Turley have been the opening day pitches now for three days. Fastball swung on, hit out towards center field. Stevens comes on, can't get it. It's a base hit. Stevens around second has to hold on. He took a long turn and had to dive back, so Barra hits a single into straightaway center field. And runners are at first and second. Well, Yogi went a long time down at spring training camp before he got his first hit. But he takes care of matters once the bell rings his first time up. We have no score, two out, men at first and second, and the hitter is Gil McDougall. Hit 300. <laughs> 300 in the World Series, and he played second base, especially in those uh, real tough uh, five, six, and seven games, like a real professional. Takes a curve over for a strike. McDougall, right-hand batter. Overly close stance. He's a man of many stances. Curveball is in. Strike two. Nothing in two. Cosetti hoping he can have a little traffic around that third base corner. McDougal asks for time, steps out, gets the batter's rosin bag. Gill hit 250 in the regular season and then woke up in the World Series, which is uh, typical of him. Brewer looking for the third out, which sometimes can be elusive. Pitches. Fastball inside, and uh, McDougal says, well, hey, didn't that kick me on the sleeve or my elbow? And Robert says, no, not quite. One ball, two strikes. Two men are out. The Yankees have two on. C 
Stephen and Barra. Each with a single. Rowe with a pitching advantage of one and two. Delivers. The curve swung on. There's a ball hit out for right field. And it is in for a base hit. And Stephen is coming in to score the first run. And around to third goes Barra. Jensen had to come fix the ball on the short hop, and he had no play. And it is one to nothing in favor of the world champion. McDougal hit it right off the end of his bat. Got a half dunked it in the short right field. So, Yankees now have one in the bank. Run is at first and third. There are still two out here in the first inning, opening day. The weatherman saw to it that we uh, didn't have opening day until today. Ma Thornberry getting the nod at first base today. Scarn with a bad back. Takes a curve in for a strike. Left-hand hitter. He's a dangerous batter if he gets his pitch because he hits his power. And he had an excellent uh, spring. He just hit that ball all over Florida. When it wasn't raining down there. That field toward right. Pass ball swung on and has a line drive in the right center for a base hit. Barra is scoring. And McDougal is on his way to third base. Jensen's throw is cut off at short to hold the batter to first base. And it is 2 nothing, New York. Well, that's the way Thorne Barry was hitting down south. So he's getting his chance today. Papi drills a solid base hit in. So four singles, two runs are counted. It is still uh, two out. And Andy Carey, the seventh Yankee to come up in the first inning. This is the first baseball game at Yankee Stadium since the World Series. Brewer delivers a curve, swung on, and grounded foul outside third base. Like one. Rommel dusts off home plate. Two nothing. Favor the Yankees. in position, deals, change up on the inside, ball one, one and one, Thornberry is the runner at first, McDougal is the runner at third, right-handed deals, a fastball, that Kicks the bat for an accidental foul. Carey was falling back from a high inside fastball that went off the bat. The runners, of course, broke and each went 90 feet, but uh, the foul ball call for strike two makes it a dead ball and the runners have to return. Mike Google to third, Ron Barry to first. So Carey, who tried to get out of the way of what would have been ball two and have a count of two and one, has the accidental foul, and he now gets back up to bat with the actual count being ball one, strike two. Brougham, slender right-handed, delivers a curve, swung on and missed, strike three. So he finally gets out of it, but not before the Yankees count two runs on four hits. And at the end of the first inning, New York, Two runs, four hits, and no errors. And Boston, no runs, no hits, and no errors. And Big Turley, who won 21 in the league last year and then picked up two more against Milwaukee, goes out to the mound. Uh, a rich man this early in the ballgame. Well, we promised you uh, other scores, and let's take care of that. Uh, Cleveland and Kansas City postponed because of rain. Baltimore to Washington postponed because of rain. At the end of three innings, Chicago at Detroit, Donovan going for the White Sox, and Larry going for Detroit. It is 3-2 Chicago. Uh, Cash at a home run in the first inning with one man on uh, for the White Sox. Suddenly they're getting home runs this early part of the season. I know Lopez hopes it can continue. Cincinnati is at Philadelphia at the end of two innings. 
With no score, Lawrence for Cincinnati, Gomez for Philadelphia. Time has been called because of rain. Uh, Los Angeles at Chicago. Koufax for the Dodgers and Phillips for the Little Bears. No score into the first inning. They walk at Pittsburgh, postponed because of snow. San Francisco at St. Louis. McCormick for San Francisco and Mizell for St. Louis. The game has not begun. Rather interesting that San Francisco recently uh, got Sam Jones from St. Louis. And uh, if I read the papers correctly, Mr. Jones uh, sort of stirred up a little controversy by pitching and winning easily against his ball club that traded him away uh, last night. Well, Vic Wirtz is coming up for his first official at-bat as a member of the Red Sox. They count on him to increase their power and to give them uh, this sort of a power lift. Runnels, Williams, Wirtz, and Jensen. Of course, Williams is not here. Ball game is being televised on back to Boston, and I imagine Theodore has got uh, both eyes a winking up there. Moving into the second inning, it is 2-0 in New York. We're delighted that Armed Forces Radio is carrying the play-by-play today to our service personnel all over the world. Curly's first pitch to work is ball one. Fastball is in for a call strike, one and one. Wirtz is a dangerous batter. He's a very courageous fellow. He had a uh, polio a couple of years ago. I think they got over it. Takes strike two. Turley let up, had it on the outside. Wirtz came down, took a hitch in the swing, then decided he wouldn't uh, swing, and Ramos says it's a strike anyhow. One ball, two strikes. Wirtz swinging from the end, left hand hitter. Takes strike three. Turley's quick little curve, had him. And Wirtz walks away. I uh, don't think he um, felt too complimentary toward umpire Rommel. But that is understandable when you've had a third strike called on you. Now we have the um, player voted the most valuable in the league last year, Jackie Jensen. Right-hand hitter. Takes a fastball inside. Jensen knocked in 122 counters last season. Curveball high inside, drives him back and down, ball two. Two and home. One out, nobody on, second inning. Big strapping right hand to Turley, no wind up, pitches the fastball low outside, ball three, so he's put in a hole. This is opening day on it for the Yankees until Saturday, April 25. Fastball is laid in for a strike. That'll be Ladies' Day, girls. The Orioles will be here Saturday, April 25, Ladies' Day, and then a double header Sunday, April 26. Fastball fouled off. Strike two. Then the next uh, business here at the stadium will be Washington, Saturday, May 9. That'll also be Ladies' Day. Pitches in, call strike three. He got a fastball on the inside. And Charlie has picked up uh, two call strikeout victims here in the second inning. Actually, um, the real work here at the stadium gets underway on um, Saturday, the 9th of May. Washington comes in on the doubleheader the next day. 
And then the Western Club starts coming through. That's the beginning of the first real homestand. Curveball is into Malzone for a call strike. That's a big curve. Malzone fell back from it, and the pitch still got the inside. Starting on May 9th, the Yankees are going to be home practically all that month. What it is this year is that the uh, curve inside, ball two, is that the Yankees um, will not get going so early in the season, but will finish at home. Last year, they pretty much finished on the road in September. That's the way it is, often at years. 2 nothing, New York. Tell his pitch. Curve swung on ground aid wide at third base. Carey scoops it, fires over to Thornberry in time by three steps and miles on his out. And it is one, two, three in the top of the second. And the score at the end of an inning and a half of opening day. The Yankees two and the Red Sox nothing. You know, I've gotten in the habit of writing notes to myself of things that I ought to do. I notice here that I made a note to take my car to my Atlantic dealer for a safety service lubrication. With the spring driving season at hand, that's a smart thing for you to do, too. You see, your Atlantic dealer gives your car expert lubrication following the specifications that have been set down by the manufacturer. And then at no extra cost, he checks many safety areas that, if neglected, could cause you trouble. Like windshield wipers, battery tires, radiator, the fan belt, muffler, the tailpipe. Then, you got a written record of the work done and the condition of your car. Pretty good idea, don't you think? So, make a note now to get an Atlantic safety service lubrication soon from your Atlantic dealer. The man who keeps your car on the go. Moving into the bottom of the second inning for the Yankees, it'll be Richardson, Turley, and Bauer. The Yankees got... Two runs in the bottom of the first inning on four singles. Seaburn singles with one out, then after Mantle line to center. Barra singles Seaburn to second, and then McDougal dropped a single into right field, a bloop job that brought home Seaburn, and then Thornberry rifled a single into center for the other run. So it's 2 nothing as Richardson steps in and waits the first pitch. Okay, Red. An RBI, right-hand hitter. Roar, right-hander, fires a fastball over, sidearm for a call strike. Richardson began at shortstop, a position he hadn't played in uh, quite a few years, rather erratically, and then soon set it down. Played out there at the end of spring training like he owned it. Which is low for a ball. One and one. The Yankees are two up, going into the last of the second inning. Broad delivers... Pitch inside off the catcher White's mitt. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. One of the familiar figures of an opening day at the stadium has uh, been sincerely missed. The veteran writer of the World Telegram, the son, Dan Daniels. Pitch is one of that and missed the strike two. Dan was operated on uh, two days ago at the University Hospital in Manhattan, and all reports that he is convalescing very satisfactorily and resting comfortably. But uh, 2-2 pitch swung on as a ground ball down too short. Up with it is Button, throws to first, in time, and rips him down. I want to say that... Uh, but Daniel, he's resting uh, as comfortably as he could not to be here at Yankee Stadium today. And also our congratulations to um, our associate, Mel Allen, who received the 52 Association Award last evening at a done at the World of Astoria for his long service and work with wounded servicemen. Well, here's the big pitcher, Bob Turley. Nothing ball game in favor of the Yankees. Brewer delivers a fastball low inside. Fairly bluffing a bond. Finally had to skip rope. Ball one. End of the first inning, Los Angeles at Chicago. No score. Pitch. Over for a call strike. Well, Cincinnati at uh, Philadelphia, which got two innings in. 
has been postponed because of rain. Pitch swung on as a high fly ball. The shortstop button is under and takes it for the out. Go to up to there, Hank Bauer, who was struck out by Brewer. Now comes up to try and make amends. Bauer's philosophy is you may strike me out, but not often. Overly close stance. Out field shades him into left. Two down, nobody on. Brewer working rapidly as is his custom delivers a curve high inside for ball one. Friends, when you get out to the stadium, you are certainly going to be pleased with the new scoreboard. Oh, it's a wonder. And it's not only got the stuff up there, but you can see it. It's inside, ball two. In the center of the scoreboard is uh, movable type. In other words, they can print messages up there. For example, the opening message was welcome to the uh, 1958 World Champion Yankees in their opening day. Right now it says this is Turley's first opening game start as a Yankee. Bauer hits a high foul back. So they can put any sort of information up there. News bulletins. Anything else. If there's anything to be done to make this ballpark better, the Yankees uh, haven't heard about it yet. Brewer pitches, the fastball swung on, grounded down the third base half speed. Malzahn picks it up barehanded, throws, not in time, and Bauer beats it out for a base hit. Slow rolling ball up to third base, so Bauer gets his first hit of the year. With a single in the first inning and then scored the first run, steps in. Big Ranger, left hand hitting left fielder. Had a uh, wonderful spring. Roy takes a look at him, delivers a curve in there for a strike. Stephen had 24 hits in spring training. Swings, hits a high foul out of play. Speaking about this um, wonderful new $300,000 scoreboard here at the stadium, which you'll see when you come out, the Master Control Control has almost 5,000 push buttons. It gives you an idea of what they can do with it. Two strikes to Stephen, two out, Bauer at first. Yankees leading 2 nothing. Broad checks first, pitches high inside for ball, ball one. Catcher White returns. One and two. Arm is ready. Hand to deals and Seaman takes the curve uh, low inside, ball two. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Bar ready to go in anything with two out, takes his lead off first. Pitch is swung on. There's a ball hit out toward left field, and it is dropping in for a base hit. Bowers on his way to third base. The left fielder picks her up. Geiger throws to third, and Bowers out. Geiger to Malzone. Bowers trying to take the extra base on a dunk single into left is out at third. 
So it gives Seaman a single two left field to give him two for two for the year. Bauer is outstretching the left fielder to the third baseman. And no runs, two hits, one left. And the score at the end of two innings, the Yankees two and the Red Sox nothing. You know, around this time of the year, some people complain about spring fever. They do when we have spring weather anyway. Today you wouldn't uh, likely have spring fever. I don't know about cures for people, but I can tell you how to cure spring fever in that car of yours. Give it a tonic of Atlantic Imperial gasoline. Believe me, that's the gasoline to give your car plenty of pep and power. Even makes older cars feel young again. You'll get maximum miles per gallon. You'll get real economy. So stop in at the Atlantic dealers and fill up with Atlantic Imperial. The gasoline that's better to start with, better to stay with, all the way. Now let's pause for station identification. This is the home of Champions Baseball Network. At 1460 on the radio dial, WOKO in Albany, New York. WOKO time, 21 minutes before 3 o'clock. Current temperature is 42 degrees. Gary Geiger, the left fielder, will lead off for the Red Sox to be followed by Tom Brewer and then Don Button. It's 2-0 as we start the third inning. Bob Turley, with a two-run lead for the Yankees, set to pitch to Geiger. Central Post Office. The box is the same number as our year, 1959. New York, 51, New York. Now we have uh, Gary Geiger. First up for the Red Sox, left-hand hitting outfielder. And Turley gives him a low curve, ball one. Bob comes back with a curve, low inside, ball two. Geiger and Wirtz came from the Cleveland club for Pearsall. Geiger started out as a pitcher. Minor league, one year, 120. Then switched over to outfielding and infielding. is now outfielding. Takes a call strike. Although last year at Cleveland, he uh, twice was used um, for short rolls in the infield and, and pitched one two-inning stint for the Indians. Ground ball hit to the right side. Second base, Mike Dougal up with it. Over to Thornberry at first, and Geiger is out. One up, one away. Curley has committed only one man to get on. His first batter, he walked him. Next man hit into a double play, and he's gotten everybody out. Sammy White hit 259 regular season last year. Rated one of the top receivers in the trade. 2 nothing in favor of the Yankees. Curly right hand, the curve ball high outside, ball one. Bob has the fastball, which of course the hitters are aware of and have to be on the alert for, but he's developed changes of speed pitches, breaking stuff. Delivers the fastball in there for the strike. One and one. One ball, one strike. Curley using a no wind up delivery. Deals. Fastball low outside. Ball two. Two and one. Curley pitching. Barra catching. Thronberry at first. McDougal at second, Richardson at short, Gary at third. Call strike two over the outside above the knees. White doesn't think so. Ramos says, yes, sir. It's two and two. Sieben with uh, two, four, two is in left. Mantle in center. Bauer in right. One out and nobody on the third inning. If you just got in with us, opening day here at the stadium. Curve swung on and line to short stop Richardson for the out. Two down. And the Red Sox starting pitcher, Tommy Brewer, is now coming out of his dugout. This is dugout is on the third base side of home plate. Cleveland at Kansas City. 
has been postponed because of the weather. So let's see. That's uh, four games postponed uh, today. The ball clubs give up hard on Sundays, so you can't get them back. Brewer hits it the first pitch, a high pop fly that crossed up Richardson, backs under on the grass in left field, makes the grab, and that's it. So Turley, to get his first nine out, has pitched to uh, but nine men. Score at the end of two and a half, the Yankees two, and the Red Sox nothing. Here's good news for everybody concerned with his family car. It's Atlantic Premium Motor Oil, sealed for your protection in both one and five quart cans. That's just the right grade for your car, too. And all of it available at your Atlantic dealers. Best of all, a change to premium motor oil means a change to quick starts. Less engine wear all through the cold weather. Atlantic Premium Motor Oil flows freely, acts to give extra protection to your car's engine. You can learn more about the advantages of an Atlantic premium motor oil change whenever you visit your Atlantic dealer for a safety service lubrication. And you can rest assured if an oil change is called for, he'll have Atlantic premium motor oil handy. It pays to get today's finest motor oil, Atlantic premium for quick starts, less engine wear. Remember, Atlantic keeps your car on the go. Mickey Mantle leading off of the Yankees in the bottom of the third inning. I feel deep, round toward right. Brewer delivers, and Mantle takes a fastball high outside. Ball one. For the Red Sox, it is Brewer dealing them, White receiving. Wirtz playing his first game for them at first base. Ronald is at second. Short stop is button, and the third baseman is Malzo. Ball one pitch. A little off the fastball, it sank good for a call strike. And Gary Geigum played about 40 odd ball games uh, in and out for the Indians last year's and left. Stevens in center. Right field is Jensen. Williams is up in Boston, you know. Matt of Bunch. Throw off the mound. Up with it. Throws to first in time and got in by a whisker. Woo, close. Mantle pushed the ball a little close back to the mound. So he's out. His bunt bid for a base hit. Pitcher to the first baseman covering. Yogi Baron, a single to center field, a line single in the first inning. Dora swings at the high fly ball to straightaway center. Stevens is under it. He has it. And we have two out. The Yankees lead 2 nothing here. At the end of four innings at Detroit, the White Sox are one up, 3-2. to two. We have the other two games in the league postponed. Cleveland at Kansas City, Baltimore to Washington. End of two innings in the National League. Los Angeles at Chicago, no score. San Francisco is getting ready to go at St. Louis. Milwaukee at Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, Philadelphia. Cancel. Rain. Rain in Philadelphia and snow at Pittsburgh. Here's the McDougal. Takes a curve low outside. Ball one. Gill uh, hit a single off the end of his bat into right field. First inning, which got in the first run and made possible the scoring of the second. Kept it alive. Brewer works. Fastball swung on ground. It's fouled by a yard outside third base. One and one. McDougal has his forward foot closer to the plate than his rear one. Closed his stance. Fouls off a curve. Strike two. Gill keeps moving around up there. When he first came to the Yankees, he had an open stance. That forward foot was almost pointed at the third baseman. Right now, it's about pointed at the second baseman. He got a reason for it. Pitchers keep changing on him, and he keeps changing on them. One-two pitch. Fastball is right over. 
And Gill, who had seen two curves, suddenly uh, looked at this fastball and had it. So, in the three innings, two runs, six hits, and no errors for New York. No runs, no hits, and no errors for the Red Sox. Now, we've got a young man coming over here. Let's see. This is going to be your third opening day at this microphone, isn't it, Mr. Rizzuto? Right, Red. How many openings for you down there on the playing field with that uh, finger glove? I had 13 with the Yankees, Red. Uh, All wonderful openings, though. A lot of butterflies, just like today (laughs) back here. Well, happy number 16. (laughs) Okay, Red. Good to be with you and Mel, Phil. Certainly my pleasure, too, Red. And there's always a lot of excitement in opening day ceremonies and the first game of the ball regular season for the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. Because there's a lot of worry. I know when I was playing, the thing that worried me the most was when I would get that first base hit. Bobby Brown, the... Yankee shortstop and third baseman who became quite a, a doctor. We both worried until we got that first base hit because there is a possibility of going through a full season without getting that hit. Until you get number one, you really worry. Here's the leadoff hitter, Don Budden, who walked in the first inning. Takes a curve, high inside, ball one. Budden is the only man to reach first base against Bob Turley, and that was on a base on balls. After working the count to 3-2, Fairley delivers a fastball at top foul and out of play in the upper deck and back of home plate. One of one the count. Yankees leading 2 to nothing here in the top of the fourth. On a cold, windy day here at Yankee Stadium. You know it's cold. Happy Dirk and I both have gloves, top coats, hats, One-one pitch is bunted down the first baseline, but it goes foul. Picked up by Marv Thronberry, who's playing first for the Yankees today. One ball, two strikes. The count on Don Button. Shortstop for the Boston Red Sox. On deck, Pete Runnels. The wind is whipping out towards right field. Here at Yankee Stadium. Charlie sets on the mound with his no wind up delivery. The slow curve is hit slowly out towards first. Thornberry over, up with it. Flips to Charlie covering in time to get Button. One away. Well, that time Button was fooled on a change up curve ball and hit it off the end of his bat. A little twisting roller down the first baseline. That Thornberry flips to Charlie for the out. One away. Here's Pete Runnels who bounced into a double play in the first inning. Runnels, who was the runner-up to Ted Williams for the batting crown in last year's tight American League race. Left-hand hitter with a closed stance. Chokes up a little bit on the bat. Crouches at the plate. Carey moves in at third base. Turley delivers a slow curve in the dirt ball one. Jack Burns coaching at third and Del Baker down at first for the Red Sox. Eddie Rommel calling balls and strikes. Fairley's next pitch is a curve that catches the outside corner. Strike one called. One and one the count. Yankee outfield plays Runnels straight away. There's a curve way outside and high ball two, two and one. Runnels can hit to all fields. Line drive type better, not too much power. On deck, Gene Stevens. Fairly ready. The two one pitch is fouled to the right of home plate. Count even at two and two. There's certainly not a day for baseball in any sense of the word, either to play it or to watch it. But after being rained out 
For two straight days, the Yankees and the Red Sox are very happy to be able to play a game, regardless of the weather. And if you think it's bad here, they had 27-degree weather in Kansas City yesterday and played a game. The 2-2 pitch is hit on the ground, a shortstop. Richardson in, up with it. The throw to Thronberry in time to get Runnels, and it's two away. Two out, and here's Gene Stevens, who bounced to second base in the first inning. On deck, Vic Wirtz. The Yankees came up with two runs in the first inning. Norm Sieben getting the first Yankee base hit of the year. Scoring the first Yankee run after Burra singled, and McDougal looped a single to right field, and Thornberry singled a drive in Burra. Stevens, a left-hand hitter, takes a curve right down the middle, strike one call. Outfield shifted around towards right, slightly on Stevens. He takes a fastball below the knees, ball one, one and one. This is a rough day on ball players in particular because it's very cold. Outside of the pitcher and the catcher who do most of the work consistently and they keep pretty warm. The batter, if he should catch one on his fist, really feels it. You get one near the thumb and it'll swell right up. Outfielders catch a line drive or the infielders and their hands will be stinging for a week. There's a fastball hit deep to right center field. Mantle digging back to his left. Under it now and makes the catch just in front of the auxiliary scoreboard on the running track and deep right center field. The longest hit ball of the game thus far for the Red Sox in the top of the fourth. No runs, no hits, no Yankee errors, no one left. Score at the end of three and a half innings of play. The Yankees two and the Red Sox nothing. You know, it takes an expert to spot potential trouble in your car, and one of the best in the business is your Atlantic dealer. Now that the spring driving season is here, why not let him get your car in top shape with an Atlantic safety service lubrication? In addition to a thorough-going lubrication, following the specifications set down by the manufacturer of your car, you get at no extra cost a complete checkup of the many safety areas that, if neglected, could cause you trouble. Tires, battery, windshield wipers, radiator, fan belt, muffler, and even the tailpipe. And you also get a written report covering the work done and showing you the condition of your car. Get a safety service lubrication today from your Atlantic dealer. The man who keeps your car on the go. Mr. Turley has pitched himself a rather keen four innings. The Red Sox have had one base runner. That was Don Budden who led off with a base on ball. He was quickly doubled up. And since then, Turley's been mowing them down. Brewer had a rough first inning, gave up four hits, has settled down since then. Marv Thornberry leading off. And Brewer's first pitch is swung on. It's ground ball to second base. Reynolds up with the ball. Quick throw to first in time, and there's one out. One down. As Andy Carey comes to the plate. Okay, Phil. One away, here's Andy Carey, who struck out swinging in the first inning. On deck, Bobby Richardson. Frank Crisetti coaching down at third, and Ralph Houck over at first. Yankees wouldn't seem the same without the old crow down there in the coaching box at third base. First pitch to Carey is a curve over strike one call. John Stevens umpiring at first, Larry Knapp at second, and John Rice over at third. The right-handed Brewer delivers a fastball just low outside, ball one, one and one. One ball, one strike, one out, no one on. Here in the bottom of the fourth, the Yankees leading two to nothing. 1-1 1-1 pitch is hit foul alongside a third. Malzon moving over near the coach's box. Grissetti now moves, and Malzon almost drops that ball. As a matter of fact, he thought he had dropped it. The wind that we told you was blowing towards right blew the ball towards third. It was in foul territory. Malzon caught the ball. It rolled up to the very tips of the fingers of his glove where there's no feeling. 
And Frank looked on the ground thinking he had dropped the ball, but it just hung there. We could see a lot of white. Carey fouls out to Frank Malzon. Two away, here's Bobby Richardson who bounced to short in the second inning. First pitch to Richardson is a curve, strike one called on the inside corner. Red Sox have Gary Geiger in left, Gene Stevens in center, Jackie Jensen in right. Frank Malzon at third, Don Button at short, Pete Runnels at second, Vic Wirtz at first, Sammy White catching, and Tom Brewer ready to deliver. The fastball is hit on the ground at first, up with it on two hops, Vic Wirtz races to the bag for the unassisted putout. So for the Yankees in the bottom of the fourth, no runs, no hits, no Red Sox, there is no one left. Score at the end of four full innings, the Yankees two, and the Red Sox nothing. And right now, I'd like to mention that the second half of this game is being brought to you by the crisp refresher Ballantine beer. You know, Ballantine's the crisp kind of light with true lager flavor. That's what makes it the crisp refresher. No wonder Ballantine's the largest selling beer in the East. A quick look at the scoreboard. In the American League, Cleveland playing at Kansas City is postponed because of rain. A doubleheader, Baltimore at Washington, also postponed because of rain. Chicago at Detroit, at the end of five innings, that ball game all tied up three and three. Dick Donovan going against Frank Larry. Cash home it in the first with one on for the White Sox. And Eddie Yost home it in the fifth with nobody on, both their first of the year. 3-3 three, three deadlock. In the National League... Cincinnati nothing, Philadelphia nothing at the end of two. Lawrence against Gomez. The Dodgers nothing and the Cubs nothing at the end of two and a half. Koufax against Phillips. Milwaukee at Pittsburgh postponed because of snow. And the Cardinals lead the Giants three to nothing at the end of one. McCormick against Mizell. Dick Wirtz fouls the first pitch back against the screen. Strike one as we open the top of the fifth inning. Wirtz was called out on strikes in the second inning. Big left-hand power hitter, acquired from the Cleveland Indians in an off-season deal. Fairley's next pitch is outside, ball one, one one-on-one. The Yankees lead two to nothing here in the top of the fifth inning. On a perfect day for football. Even then it'd be a little cold watching a football game. Fastball sails outside, ball two, two and one. Jackie Jensen is on deck with Frank Malzone to follow. This is the meat of the Red Sox batting order. Their power. The pitch is hit on the ground. Back to the box. Charlie is up with it on two hops. Over to Thronberry, and it's one away. One away. And the batter, Jackie Jensen, who also was called out on strikes in the second inning. Charlie has allowed one man to reach first base, and that was the leadoff hitter, Don Budden, who walked in the first inning, leading off the ball game. He was erased, the front end of a double play, and since then no one has reached first base. Jensen takes a fastball high, ball one. One ball, no strike, one out, nobody on. Shirley ready with his no wind up delivery. The pitch to Jensen is a curve high inside ball two, and we pause now for station identification. This is WOKO 1460 on the dial, Albany, New York. WOKO time, 3 o'clock, current temperature 42 degrees. The next pitch to Jackie Jensen is low outside, ball three, a three-nothing count to Jensen. Curly has been behind on quite a few batters, but has been able to come in with the ball when he needed it. 
three nothing pitch is right down the middle strike one call three and one Jackie Jensen the most valuable player in the American League last year right hand batter lots of power swings and pops the pitch to short right field Hank Barr moving in under it and makes the catch for out number two two away and that'll bring up Frank Malzone who bounced up there in the second inning on deck Gary Geiger Bob Turley takes that deep breath on the mound to relax First pitch is a curve that's just below the knees, ball one. This year on the home of Champions Network, a real pro replacing another real pro, Bob Delaney taking over for Jeff Davis. Jeff unable to be with us this year. There's a curve that catches the outside corner, strike one, one and one. Bob Delaney, who did such a wonderful job with Russ Hodges on the Giant ball games before the Giants deserted us and moved out to San Francisco. The 1-1 pitch curve high inside, and Malzone has to hit the deck to get out of the way of that one. It was a slow curve. Two balls and one strike. Fairly ready. 2 1 pitch is just outside ball three, three and one. Yankees lead two to nothing. We're in the top of the fifth inning with two out, no one on. Pitch is popped in the air in back of the plate. Yogi throws the mask away. Plenty of room under it and makes the catch for out number three. And for the Red Sox, in the top of the fifth, no runs, no hits, no Yankee errors, no one left to score at the end of four and a half innings of play. The Yankees, two, and the Red Sox, nothing. Say, here's a song that'll make you snap to attention. To be crisp, a beer must be believe life. With true lager flavor, precisely right. Lively shoulder, crystally clear, the crisp refresher. Valentine, Valentine beer. Hey, get your cold beer. Hey, get your Valentine. Hey, get your cold, cold beer. Get your ice cold Valentine beer. Valentine beer is a crisp kind of light with true lager flavor. No wonder it's the largest selling beer in the East. Enjoy the crisp refresher. And here's a fellow who making the Yankee fans enjoy the game, Bob Turley, who was leading off for the Yankees here in the bottom of the fifth. Bob popped to shortstop in the second inning. Pitched a real strong game thus far. Tom Brewer out on the mound after a shaky first inning has settled down, shut the Yankees out. There's a fastball in there, strike one call. Frank Crosetti runs out and picks up a couple of pieces of paper that are blowing around the infield. The Crow is still in real good shape. Looks like he could go out there and play nine fast innings. Brewer's next pitch is a curve low. Ball one, one and one. Big, beautiful new scoreboard out in right center field. One one pitch is hit on the ground. Slowly the third. Malzone comes in up with it on the short hop. Fires to first. And Wirtz has to come off the bag, makes a nice play tagging Turley. 
On a slow hopper, that Malzone had a charge. He threw a little uh, wild at first. Wirtz leaped off the bag, made the catch, and tagged Turley as he ran by. Five to three of your scoring. One away. Here's Hank Bauer, who struck out and then beat out an infield single. One for two for Hank. Bauer swings a ground ball to third. Malzone is up with it. Over to first, and it's two away. Hank Bauer, who needs one more homer to achieve the 150 mark. Just bounces out third to first. With two out, here's Norm Seaburn, who has had a perfect day. Leading the American League in batting with an average of 1,000. Two for two. He's at least tied for the lead. Can't hit any higher than that. Single to right, score to run, and single to left. Left-hand batter who had another fine spring. Takes a change of pace outside and low ball one. The Yankees, who have lost only two home openers since 1947 while winning ten. The pitch is fouled in back of the plate. Out of play, strike one, one and one. The Yankees, two and the Red Sox, nothing. We're playing the bottom of the fifth. Two out, nobody on. Mickey Mantle on deck. One and one count on Norm Sheeban. Brewer ready. Kicks. The pitch is hit slowly down the first baseline. Vic Wirtz picks it up with his foot on first base for out number three. And for the Yankees, in the bottom of the fifth, no runs, no hits, no Red Sox errors, no one left to score at the end of five full innings. The Yankees, two, and the Red Sox, nothing. Well, sir, we're finally getting in this opening game after two miserable days of rain and cold weather. And after this single game, the Yankees will be touring the East the next two weeks. They return to the Yankee Stadium for a brief weekend set with the Baltimore Orioles on April 25th and 26th. Now, those will be the only days you'll have a chance to see your world champion Yankees in action until the first long homestand of the season starting Saturday, May the 9th. So plan now to be on hand to see the Yankees against the Orioles here on Saturday afternoon. April the 25th, the season's first ladies' day, and again on Sunday afternoon, April the 26th. The lights have just gone on here at Yankee Stadium. The lights are on the first time this year that the lights have been on for a ball game, other than a football game, here at Yankee Stadium. Which kind of gives you the idea of what kind of a day it is here for opening day between the Red Sox and the Yankees. A cold, dark, dreary day. But we're seeing some mighty fine baseball. Bob Turley's first pitch to Gary Geiger is low inside. Ball gets away from Yogi. Geiger bounced to second in the third inning. Temperature can't be any higher than 40 degrees. 42, Pappy tells me. No, I'm wrong again. The curve is low inside. Ball 2-2 two, two and nothing. Sir, do my feet feel like the temperature is about zero on this cold floor up in the radio booth? Two balls, no strikes on Gary Geiger. The fastball is strike one call. Catches the outside corner. Andy Carey playing in at third. Geiger can go down that line. He's a left-hand batter with lots of speed. Richardson's in a couple of steps at short. There's a ball hit back to the box on one hop. Turley gloves it. Flips the throw and very one away. One out and the batter will be Tom, rather, Sammy White. Sammy White, who popped to short in the third inning. Tom Brewer is on deck. The 
Bob Shirley, who has retired 15 Red Sox hitters in a row since Budden led off with a walk. The pitch to White is hit in the air to left center field. Seabird moving over. Plenty of room under this one. And makes the catch for out number two. Two away. And the batter will be Tom Brewer, who pops it short in the third inning. Don't forget, fans, the first rained out game of this series, which was last Friday, will be replayed May the 27th. That's a Wednesday afternoon when uh, the Yankees will meet the Boston Red Sox. The other date has not been decided as yet, just when it will be played. Remember, the Yankees lost the first two games of this three-game series. Tom Brewer, right-hand batter, chokes up on the bat just a little bit. Two away, no one on. The Yankees lead two to nothing. There's a curve ball down the middle. Strike one call. Bob Turley, who looks just as sharp as he did all last year and during the World Series against Milwaukee, sends another curve. This one is low. Ball one, one and one. Don Button on deck. Charlie's next pitch is a curve that swung out and missed strike two. One ball, two strikes to count. The curve is hit fair down the third baseline, carries up with it, throws off balance to first, in time for the out, and a beautiful play by Andy Carey. Oh, oh, man, that was a dandy on what looked like a ball that might go foul on a slow curve ball. It was hit slowly to third. Carey picked it up just fair and off balance, sidearm to the Throneberry, who stretched and made a shoestring catch, just nipping Tom Brewer for out number three. For the Red Sox in the top of the sixth, no runs, no hits, no Yankee errors, no one left. Score at the end of five and a half innings of play. The Yankees, two, and the Red Sox, nothing. Well, here in the bottom of the sixth, with the Yankees leading two to nothing, Mickey Mantle, who lined the center and was thrown out on an attempted bunt, is the batter. And Mickey's next home run will be his 250th homer leaving him 11th among active major leaguers. Ted Williams is tops among active with a 482 at the beginning of this 59 season. Fastball catches the inside corner, strike one, one and one. Mickey Mantle batting left-handed against Tom Brewer looking for his first base hit of the 59 season. On deck, Yogi Berra with Gil McDougal to follow. There's a curve foul back out of play. Get into the press box, back of home plate. One ball, two strikes on Mickey. Tom Brewer out on the mound for the Red Sox. It's all right-handed, checks the sign from Sammy White. Big hole in left center for Mickey. Jackie Jensen playing deep and right. The pitch is high inside. Through his fastball, which you have to wait on, and the umpire does too because it comes back and away from a left-hand batter. Two and two to count on Mickey. Brewer takes time out, takes a handkerchief out, and rubs his hand. Wipes his nose a little bit. This cold weather, those noses do tend to run a little. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Fastball hit on the ground at second base. Runnels knocks it down. Puts it up close to first just in time to get Mantle in this one away. A hard hit two hopper to Pete Runnels that Pete knocked down. It bounced in front of him and he picked it up and just did get Mantle who can go down that line one away. Here's Yogi Berra who singled the center in the first inning. Scored a run in the second run of the ball game and then popped to center field. One for two for Yogi. Yankees leading two to nothing.
Brewer ready. The curve ball is outside ball one as Yogi, Yogi faked the bunt. So cold, I can't get my mouth to say what I wanted to say. The pitch to Yogi is high, ball two. Tom Brewer out on the mound for the Red Sox has settled down, and since Seaburn singled in the second inning, the Yankees have not had a base hit or a base runner. There's a curve outside ball three, three and nothing. New scoreboard having a little bit of trouble. There it is now, three and nothing. I tell you, with all those buttons out there, they're bound to have trouble. The pitch to Yogi is in there, strike one call. They call it the new miracle $300,000 scoreboard. Here's a 3-1 pitch to Yogi. Change up is popped in the air to short right. Runnels back. Jensen coming in. Runnels slips. Now he's up. And makes the catch for out number two. The outfield is still a little damp and a little soft from all the rain. And Runnels in going back for that high pop of Yogi Berras, who, by the way, was thrown off balance as... Yog looking for the fastball, had a change of pace thrown up to him. It was way out in front, popped it to short right, two way. Here's Gil McDougal, who singled the right and was called out on strike. Gil takes the fastball over strike one call. Beautiful exhibition of pitching by both Tom Brewer on the mound for the Red Sox and Bob Turley for the Yankees. Brewer's next pitch is a curve that's in there. Strike two call. Talking with Kurt Gowdy, the Red Sox play-by-play announcer. We're wondering how the Yankees always manage to give Brewer such a rough time with the tremendous curve and fastball he has. The two-strike pitch. Hit on the ground a third. Now zone up with it. Over to first. And that's all as Wirtz has to catch it and tag McDougal. Now zone's throw again, pulling Wirtz off the bag. For the Yankees in the bottom of the sixth, no runs, no hits, no Red Sox errors, no one left. And the score at the end of six full innings, the Yankees two and the Red Sox nothing. You know a beer's got to have two things to really refresh it, lightness and flavor. Well, sir, Valentine beer's got them both. It's the crisp kind of light with true lager flavor. That's what makes it the crisp refresher. Enjoy your frosty glass of Valentine soon. Real quick look at the scoreboard. Cleveland and Kansas City postponed because of rain. Baltimore and Washington, the doubleheader postponed because of rain. The White Sox lead the Tigers 4-3 to three at the end of 6.5. Cash and Yost have home in that game. Donovan against Larry. In the National League, Cincinnati at Philadelphia. A doubleheader postponed because of rain. The score was nothing, nothing at the end of two in the first game. Dodgers are trailing the Cubs three to two at the end of three and a half, and the Cardinals lead San Francisco three to nothing at the end of two. And now, as we get ready to go in the top of the seventh inning, here's Mel Allen to take over. Hello there, everybody. First half of the seventh inning, two to nothing, New York. Top of the Red Sox order: Don Button, Pete Ronalds. And Gene Stevens to follow. The first pitch is high for a ball. Button drew a pass and grounded to first. Bob Curley gets his sign. Here's the pitch. Low inside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Curly all set to work. And the 2-0 pitch in there. Strike one. Two and one. Two balls, one strike on Don Budden. 
for the next delivery. In there, strike two, two, two. And despite the cold, the crowd is warming with each pitch. As Brewer and Curley have locked horns in this opening day. Two balls, two strikes. Curley delivers to Don Button. Curve outside. Ball three. Three and two. Full count. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Swung on and fouled back out of play. Count remains 3-2 and two on Budden. Jack Burns walking up and down the third base coach's box, lapping his hands together. Dell Baker the same at first base. Bob Curley takes a deep breath, gets the sign. Here's the pitch. Swung on line down the left field line, and it is a foul ball. And the count remains three and two. Don Budden teed off on a three-two pitch. Pulled it too much. Down the left field line, the count remains three and two. Mike Higgins over in the corner of the dugout, tugging at his cap. Bob Curley all set, and the three-two pitch again is outside for ball four. And Don Button, who drew a pass to start the game, becomes the first Red Sox base runner since then. In between, Turley retired 17 men in a row, including uh, Ronalds, who hit into a double play in the first inning. Pete, a left-hand batter, steps in. Gene Stevens on deck. Two to nothing, New York, seventh inning. Curly to the stretch. Button with the leadoff first. And the pitch to Reynolds. Inside and low ball one. One ball, no strikes. Reynolds grounded to second in the first inning into a double play and grounded to short in the fourth inning. Hits the ball to all fields. Button leading away from first. Bob Curley to the stretch. Here's the pitch. And it's inside. Ball two. Two nothing. And there's some action on the Yankee bullpen. Curley up to now has been masterful. Two balls, no strikes on Runnels. Bob again to the stretch. Check the button. And the pitch to Pete. Swung on and looped down the left field line. And it is in there for a base hit. And twist into the stands for a ground rule double. And that's the first hit off Curly. A slice double to left. And the Red Sox suddenly now have the tying runs in scoring position. Bob Curley, who had a potential no-hitter going gives up a base hit to Pete Ronalds here in the seventh inning as he sliced a looping fly ball down the left field line that landed about a foot fair and twisted into the stands for a ground rule double and so the pressure cooker in which Turley found himself no hit wise is gone but the pressure cooker is still there game wise As Gene Stevens, a left-hand hitter, steps in. Grounded to second, fly to right center. Brick works on deck and Jackie Johnson to follow. The meat of the order up. Button leading off third. Runnels off second. Nobody out. Two to nothing, New York, seventh inning. The pitch. It's low outside, ball one. Bob Feller is the only pitcher ever to pitch a no-hitter on an opening day. He did that against the White Sox, April 16, 1940. 
One ball, no strikes. Runners leading away from second and third. The pitch to Gene Stevens. Curveball in there, strike one. Bob taking his time. Button moves off third, Runnels off second. Here's the pitch to Stevens. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Bob cut loose. A blazer about letter high. A one-two count. Moves off third. Runnels off second. Shirley all set. The one-two pitch. Fastball swung on. Bounded wide to first. Thrown bear up with it. Throws to first. And it's in time for the out as Button scores. Beautiful play by Turley. A hard hit ball deep to first. And Turley and Stevens are racing to the bag. Thrown bear through to the bag. And Bob was in there at just half a step ahead. Reynolds moved on to third as Button scored, and it's two to one. With a tying run on third, one out, and the batter, Vic Wirt. Turley was almost outrun by Gene Stevens. A key play at first base. Two to one the score. And here's Vic Wirtz, who looked at the third strike in the second inning and hit to the box in the fifth. The infield shortens up for a possible play at the plate. Outfield toward right. In center and right, straight away to left. The big gap in left center. Bob Turley delivers to Wirtz. Swings and fouls it off to the left of the plate off the end of the bat down the third baseline. Strike one. Yanks two, Red Sox one. It's the seventh inning. Bob taking his time. Carey and Richardson are in at the edge of the infield grass. McDougald and Throneberry are playing it halfway, playing to the strength of Wirtz. The pitch inside for a ball and counts one and one. Jackie Johnson to follow. One ball, one strike. Ronalds leads off third. The pitch is outside. Two and one. Two balls, one strike on Vic Wirtz. The Red Sox. Finally breaking through on Turley here in the seventh inning. Pete Reynolds comes up the line at third. Turley delivers and Vic Wirtz swings and lifts a foul out of play back to third into the upper deck and the count is 2-2. Two, two. two balls, two strikes. Eddie Ramos signals the Yankee ball boy for... A handful of balls. The ball boy waves back at him, and Ramos says, No, I'm not waving at you. I want some baseballs. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Carey and Richardson have gone back halfway now. 2-2 two, two the count on Wirtz. Runnels up the line from third. Here's the pitch. Curve outside. Ball three. Full count now. Bob is trying to, or was trying to avoid uh, giving Wirtz a fastball. He's a fastball hitter. 
Run the count out now to three and two. Pete Ronalds off third, one out, two to one New York. Here's a three two pitch. Inside ball four, another curve, and Wirtz walks. Third pass given up by Turley, two in this inning. And it brings to the plate Jackie Jensen, who took a third strike and flied to right. The American League most valuable player, 1958. Frank Malzone on deck. Yankee bullpen in action. Outfield straight away and deep. Infield back. Runnels on third. Works on first. One out. One in on the seventh inning. Two to one New York. Turley to the stretch. Now the pitch to Jensen. Outside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Bob gets the sign from Yogi. Nods his head okay. The runner's leading away from first and third. Turley's pitch, and Jensen takes a curveball over for a strike. One and one. Leads off third, Wirtz off first. Turley to the stretch. Here's the pitch. Jensen swings, lifts a high foul out of play back up third. Ball going up onto the roof underneath the light tower. A 1-2 count on Jackie. One run in in the seventh inning. 2-1 to one, New York. Pete Ronalds on third and Vic Wirtz on first. Jackie Johnson, the open stance, holding the bat down to end. Squares away. Charlie gets the sign from Yogi. End of the stretch. The runners widen their leads. And the one-two pitch. Curve is outside. Ball two. Two-two. Two balls, two strikes. Pete Reynolds comes off third. Vic Wirtz moves off first. Turley into the stretch. And the pitch. Curveball swung on. A fly ball hit the left. Should deliver Reynolds. Seaburn makes the catch, and the throw goes to second base. Here comes Runnels on end to score. It's a tie game, 2-2. A sacrifice fly for Jackie Jensen. And it's a tie ball game, 2-2, as Frank Malzone steps in, grounded to third and fouled out to the catcher. The Red Sox have fashioned two runs out of... One hit in this inning and one hit in the game thus far for them. A walk to Budden, a double by Runnels, an infield out, and a walk to Wirtz, and a sacrifice fly by Jensen. Malzone, right hand batter. Turley to the stretch, and the pitch is outside, ball one. After walking Button to start the game, Turley retired the next 17 in a row to this inning. And the pitch. High, ball two, fastball, two nothing.
Shirley again to his stretch. Mile zone squares away. And the pitch. Swung on. It's a high pop out back at second. McDougal on the grass. Makes the catch and the side's retired. Two runs for the Red Sox. One hit. No Yankee errors. One left on for Boston. And the score at the end of six and a half innings. The Red Sox two. The Yankees two. Right now we're going to serve up a musical treat with a marimba beat. Icely light, icely light, with true love flavor. Icely light, icely light, lively golden, crystally clear. The crisply fresher, the crisply fresher. Valentine, Valentine, be. Hey, get your salt beer. Hey, get your Valentine. Valentine beer is the crisp kind of light with true lago flavor. No wonder it's the largest selling beer in the East. Last half of the seventh inning. Red Sox two, the Yankees two. Marv Throneberry will be followed by Andy Carey and Bobby Richardson. Tom Brewer's pitch swung on and missed strike one. After a shaky first two innings, Tom Brewer settled down and has pitched great ball. His next delivery, swung on, hits the ball by Brewer. He chases the ball, picks it up, throws to first and gets him. A fine recovery. A wicked liner that looks as if it's going to be a base hit. Brewer got the glove on it, slowed it up, chased it, recovered, and threw Throneberry out for the 13th consecutive retirement now by Brewer. One out. And the batter, Andy Carey, who struck out and fouled out to third. 2-2 Two -two the score. Brilliant play by Brewer. The right-hander's pitch swung on, foul back up here, strike one. The Yankees had four hits in the first inning and two in the second. And since then, Brewer has retired 13 in a row. Curley had retired 17 in a row until the Red Sox got to him in the seventh for the one hit and two runs. The pitch swung on, foul ball to the right of the plate, out of play, strike two. Nothing in two. Gets a sign from White. Into his windup. Around comes the right arm. In comes the pitch. Swung on. And there's a looper over short for a base hit. And Andy actually was ducking the ball. And swung out of uh, self-defense. And punched a single to left. He was trying to get away and swinging uh, just in self-defense, really. And winds up with a base hit. Here's Bobby Richardson. Grounded to short and grounded to first. 2-2 Two -two the score, seventh inning. One on and one out. Brewer to the stretch. The pitch to Bobby. Swung on. Little roller. Hit out toward Malzone. He's up with it. Throws to first base in time Richardson grounds out Malzone to Wirtz two outs and Bob Curley is due up
Two men out, Bob Turley. Pops to short, grounded to third. Carry on second, 2-2, two, two, seventh inning. This is WOKO in Albany, New York. Tour to the stretch. Pitch to Bob. In there for a strike. Nothing in one. Tom Brewer ready. Delivers. Swung on and fouled back. No, oh, the ball. Did the ball get away? Terry is going on down to third. I don't know whether he swung, uh, foul tipped it, or checked his swing. Couldn't tell until suddenly White spurted after the ball. It's strike two. No, it's one and one now as signaled by Eddie Rommel. A check swing and the ball got away from White, and it's a pass ball. Carry on third. One ball, one strike, and two outs. Two-two the score in the seventh inning. Brewer into the windup. Around comes the right arm. The pitch is inside. Two and one. Pitch is bunted at and missed for strike three. Turley strikes out as he bunted on second strike. A little mix up in the count. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. And so at the end of seven innings, the Yankees. And the Red Sox are tied at 2-2. The Red Sox, two runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. The Yankees, two runs, seven hits, no errors, and four left on. We pause for station identification. WOKO, Albany, New York, 1460 on your dial. Remember, Troy Buick brings you baseball's roundup following the game. On the Valentine scoreboard in the American League, Cleveland and Kansas City rained out. Baltimore and Washington had a doubleheader rained out. At Detroit at the end of seven innings, the White Sox four, the Tigers three. Dick Donovan relieved by Arias in the seventh. And for Detroit, Larry was relieved by Morgan in the eighth. Cash homered in the first with one on for Chicago. And Yost in the fifth with nobody on for Detroit. In the National League, Cincinnati and Philadelphia got started in the first game of a doubleheader, played two innings, and then the doubleheader was rained out. Lawrence and Gomez were the starting pitchers in the first game. Chicago, three. Los Angeles, two at the end of four and a half innings. Phillips for Chicago. Koufax replaced by Klipstein in the fourth for Los Angeles. Milwaukee at Pittsburgh snowed out. St. Louis, three. San Francisco, one. At the end of three innings, Mizell against McCormick. Now to the first of the eighth inning. Gary Geiger first up for the Red Sox. White on deck and Brewer to follow. The bottom third of the order. 2-2 the score. Geiger, left-handed hitter, grounded to second and hit to the box. The pitch is swung on and fouled off to the right of the plate. Strike one. Paid attendance today is 22,559. An overall total of 23,289 in the stadium. That includes servicemen admitted free. Bob Turley pitching to Gary Geiger. Curveball over. Strike two. Nothing in two. has the sign and the pitch. Fast ball, strike three, call over the inside corner. 
One down. Three strikeouts for Turley. Here's Sammy White who lined to short and flied to left. Right-hand batter. Turley delivers. Curve inside. Ball one. Score tied at 2-2. Turley's 1-0 pitch to White. That's high outside. And a 2-0 count. The ball went through the webbing of Yogi's glove. Hit off the end of the mitt. Nothing pitch. Inside ball three. Three nothing. Next delivery. Over strike one. Three and one. Three balls, one strike on Sammy White. Bob Turley's pitch. In there for strike two. Full count. Three and two the count on White. One out in the eighth inning. Two two the score. And the payoff pitch. Swung on it. Missed. Strike three. Sammy White goes down swinging for the fourth strikeout for Bob Curley. And Tom Brewer will be coming out. He's pitched magnificent ball since the second inning. Actually, the Yankees did not score on him in the second, though he gave up two hits in that inning, and he gets a hand. One man has reached base on Brewer since the second inning. Two men out in the eighth. 2-2 two, two the score. Bob Turley, who has pitched one hit ball. All set. And the delivery. In there for a strike. Next pitch. Outside, one and one. The one one delivery. Swung on and hit foul. Coming back out of play upstairs. Strike two. One and two. One of the postponed games with the Red Sox will be played on Wednesday, May 27th. The one-two pitch. Curveball swung on. Luke Foul. Back to first. Throneberry makes the catch on the run. Sides retired. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. And at the end of seven and a half innings, the score remains the Red Sox two, the Yankees two. And in the last half of the eighth inning, it'll be the top of the Yankee order. Hank Bauer, Norm Seaburn, and Mickey Mantle. And speaking about order, hope you remember to order some Ballantine beer. You know, more and more these days in taverns and homes, folks are switching to the crisp refresher. Ballantine beer. 
Ballantyne's the largest selling beer in the East, and that popularity is growing by leaps and bounds every day. Of course, that's understandable. You see, most beers are light enough, but they're a little too light on flavor to really refresh you. Now, Ballantyne's the crisp kind of light with true lager flavor. It proves a beer can be truly light and still give you all the honest-to-goodness lager beer flavor you want. That's what makes Ballantyne beer the crisp refresher. And that's what makes it the largest-selling beer in the East. So come on now, next time you feel like a beer, fill your glass with smooth, delicious Ballantyne beer. The crisp refresher. Last half of the eighth inning, Hank Bauer struck out and beat out a roll of the third and grounded the third. Right-hander Tom Brewer locked in the duel with Turley. Score tied 2-2. Preparing the pitch to the bruiser. Brewer to the windup and the pitch. Inside, ball one. Brewer swings to the windup. Around comes the right arm. The pitch is fouled off to the left of the plate on a check swing by Hank. One and one. Gives the sign to Brewer. The Red Sox right-hander delivers, and Bauer swings and sends a ground ball on one hop to third. Malzone up with it, throws to first in time. One away. And brings to the plate Norm Seaburn, who singled his first two times up and then grounded to first in the fifth inning. Sox two, Yankees two, eighth inning. Tom Brewer pitches, Norm Seaburn takes a curve over, strike one. A one strike pitch. It's outside, one and one. One ball, one strike. Brewer delivers, and Seaburn takes inside. Ball two, two and one. The two-one pitch to Seaburn. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Two two. Two balls, two strikes. Now the two two pitch. Swung on. There's a high drive to deep right center field. That ball is going, going down into the bleachers for a home run. Norm Seaburn teed off and hit one over the auxiliary scoreboard into the right field bleachers alongside the Yankee bullpen. His third hit of the game. And it's 3-2 to two, New York. A real wallop.
Brewer to the windup and the pitch to Mickey. Swung on. There's another high drive. It is going to Jensen right at the barrier, and he's got it, and he fell over the barrier. Mantle almost had one. Jackie Jensen leaning over the barrier into the bullpen, grabbed it. And they're two away. Jackie Jensen leaned over the barrier into the Yankee bullpen to take the drive for the second out. Here's Yogi Berra, who singled to center, flied to center, and popped to second. Tom Brewer to the windup, and the pitch to Yogi is inside, ball one. Nothing pitch to Yogi. Outside, ball two. Two outs and a two nothing count on Barra. delivers and Yogi takes it outside ball three the three nothing pitch to Barra it's outside ball four That's the first pass issued by Brewer. He has struck out four. Here's Gil McDougal. Singled, took a third strike, and grounded to third. 3-2 New York, last of the eighth. Word has come in from New Jersey that it is snowing. Snowed him out in Pittsburgh, and the snow is headed this way. It has reached the metropolitan area, but not here at the stadium. Strong wind whipping out to right field. Pitch to Gill is low outside, ball one. Sox will have the top of their order up in the first of the ninth. Button, Ronald, Stevens. Next pitch is in there. Strike one. One and one. Barra leading away. They pitch to Gill. Swung on and missed. Strike Two, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Two outs. Tom Brewer to the stretch. Delivers outside, two, two. the 2-2 pitch to Gill. There goes Yogi. The pitch is outside ball three and Yogi is tagged out on the throw down to Runnels. Yogi uh, misread the count. He looked at the scoreboard misread the count and he's out stealing White to Runnels. One run, one hit, no errors and no one left on. And at the end of eight innings of play, the Yankees three runs, eight hits, no errors, and four left on. The Red Sox two runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. 
On the Valentine scoreboard in the American League, Cleveland and Kansas City, Baltimore and Washington all rained out. The White Sox, five. Detroit, three. At the end of seven and a half innings, Donovan started for Chicago. Arias came on in the seventh. But in the last of the eighth, Lown and Rudolph have come in. Larry started for Detroit. Morgan in the eighth. Home runs cash with one on in the first for Chicago. Yost in the fifth, none on for Detroit. In the National League, Cincinnati at Philadelphia rained out after getting started in the first game of a doubleheader. There went only two innings, Lawrence and Gomez. Los Angeles, four. Chicago, three at the end of six and a half innings. Koufax, Klipstein in the fourth, Labine in the seventh for the Dodgers. Phillips for Chicago. Demeter, Homer in the seventh with one on for Los Angeles. Milwaukee and Pittsburgh slowed out. St. Uh, San Francisco at St. Louis, 3-3 at the end of four and a half innings, McCormick and Mizell. First half of the ninth inning, Don Budden, who twice has walked, leads off 3-2 New York. Turley's pitch is low, ball one. Budden walked, grounded to first, and walked. He got a walk starting the seventh that was followed by the only hit off Turley, a double by Ronalds, and the Red Sox scored two runs. Next pitch, swung on, lined out to left field, Seaburn coming on and makes the catch. One away. Don Budden lines out to Seaburn in left field. Norm went down on a knee to grab it. Here's Pete Ronalds, who grounded to second, no double play, grounded to short, then sliced the double to left for the only hit off Turley, sending Budden, who had walked, to third and two runs scored on an infield out and a sacrifice fly Gene Stevens to follow Carey moves in close at third Turley's pitch outside ball one Next delivery is low, ball two, two and nothing. Here's the pitch. Over, strike one, two and one. Yanks three, Red Sox two, ninth inning. The two one pitch. High ball three, three and one. Turley's three one pitch. Inside for ball four. Pete Ronalds walk fourth pass issued by Turley and now to the plate strides Gene Stevens with Vic Wirtz on deck one on and one out Turley into the stretch. And the pitch. Inside, ball one. Wind blowing very briskly out to right. Runnels leading off first. Turley pitches and Stevens swings and lines it foul down the right field line. Strike one, one and one. I think he broke his bat. He hit it off the end. Goes over to get a new one.
One ball, one strike. Stevens gets the batter's rosin bag. Reynolds hopping up and down at first base to keep warm. A wicked wind is whipped up out here. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. Turley delivers, curveball inside, ball two, two and one. Here's the two one pitch now, to Gene Stevens. Swung on, hit foul down the first baseline. Strike two, two two. Runnels retreats to first. Shirley blows on his pitching hand. Temperature has really dropped out here. Bob into the stretch. Runnels leads off first. And the pitch. Swung on. A drive into right center field. Mantle racing hard. Makes the catch. Here's a throw to first base. And it's caught and dropped. And Reynolds gets back safely. Mickey Mantle raced in the right center to take the line drive. It looked as if it might be in there for extra bases. Fired the ball into first base. Thronberry came off the bag, bobbled the relay, and Ronald got back safely. And so the Red Sox are still alive. Fine running catch by Mantle. Two down, and the batter is Vic Wirtz. Wirtz took a third strike, hits to the box, and walked. The Yanks three, Red Sox two, ninth inning. Charlie to the stretch. And the pitch. Inside, ball one. Jackie Johnson on deck. Early all set. Here's the pitch. Swung on. There's a fly ball into short right center. Mantle racing hard. Can't get it. The base hit. Runnels round second. Heads on into third. And that brings up Jackie Jensen. Big work gets the second hit off Curley. And the Red Sox still alive in the ninth inning. We're going to have a runner for work. Marty Keough will run for work. Or rather, Jim Busby. Busby running for work. And Jackie Jensen took a third strike, fly to right, hit a sacrifice, fly to left. Frank Malzone on deck. Pete Runnels on third. Jim Busby on first. Turley to the stretch. The pitch to Jensen. Low outside, ball one. Walk and a hit. They put runners on first and third here in the ninth inning. Turley into his stretch. Here's the pitch. Swung on, a ground ball hit out to Richardson. Throws to second for the force out on Busby, and the ball game is over. And the Yankees win it 3-2 to two as Bob Turley pitched the two-hitter. And the Yankees... Knows out the Red Sox three to two. 
No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left on. And the Yanks and Red Sox, after being delayed for two days, finally get the opener into the record book. And an exciting ball game all the way. Hope you enjoy some Valentine beer as we go off the air. The crisp for pressure. Valentine's smooth and delicious flavor is something you really enjoy. Valentine's the largest selling beer in the East. The totals, the Yankees three runs, eight hits, no errors, and four men left on. The Red Sox, two runs, two hits, no errors, and three men left on. Bob Turley, all the way to win it. Tom Brewer, all the way to be charged with the loss. Turley once pitched a one-hitter on April 26, 1958. Today, he pitched a two-hitter. He had a no-hitter going into the seventh inning. And for those who tuned in late, the Yankees jumped on Brewer in the first inning. Seaburn singled with one out. And after Mantle had lined out to center, Barra singled. And McDougal singled to score Seaburn. And Throneberry singled to score Barra. And the Yankees led two to nothing until the seventh inning. Only one man had reached base on Turley, Button, who opened the game with a walk and was erased in a double play immediately. And after having retired 17 in a row, Button walked again on the seventh. Runnell slashed a double to the left, sending Button to third. Button scored on Stevens infield out. Runnell's moving to third and scoring on Jensen, sacrifice fly to left. And then in the eighth inning with one out, Norm Seaburn hits the first home run. Here about into the bleachers. Mickey Mantle almost followed suit with Johnson leaning over the barrier into the Yankee bullpen to take his drive. And then Turley stopped the Red Sox uprising in the ninth. Runnels with one out walk went to third on Vic Ward's two out single and Busby running for Ward's was forced at second Richardson to McDougal. So we hope you enjoyed the broadcast, which came to you with the best wishes of P. Ballantyne and Sons and the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company and by authority of the Yankees. And remember, if you're smoking more these days but enjoying it less, change to Camels. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette. Have a Camel. Now, on behalf of our entire crew, Bill Rizzuto, Red Barber, Pappy Durkin, and... Our new statistician, Pete Callison. This is Mel Allen saying so long for Valentine, one of the world's largest brewers. When shopping or at your favorite tavern, make the handy three-ring sign and ask the man for Valentine. Valentine beer. Enjoy the crisp refresher. Once again, the final score, the Yankees three, the Red Sox two. Goodbye, everybody. WOKO, Albany, New York. It's Baseball Roundup. And speaking of baseball, you'll score a home run when you visit Troy Buick. Both Troy Buick branches backed by 50 years of reliability and dependability. Both Troy Buick branches give easier GMAC terms, higher trade. For that safe used car, it's Troy Buick's used car branch, 107th Street, corner of 2nd Avenue, Troy. For that 59 Buick, it's Troy Buick, 2781 6th Avenue, Troy. Now let's get right to today's results. Well, as you heard over WOKO this afternoon, it was an opening day victory for the New York Yankees. Bob Turley winning it, Tom Brewer losing it. It was a pitcher's battle all the way with Norm Seaburn providing the big blow of the day. We'll have the rundown for you in just a moment. A sure no-gamble investment pays better dividends. 
If your new car is a 59 Buick from Troy Buick, 2781 6th Avenue, Troy, you're sure of the best. 59 Buicks are the car most wanted by motorists who recognize the fine qualities and superb new features of 59 Buick. And now is your best chance to own a 59 Buick. Visit Troy Buick, test ride in the Sabre, the Invicta, or the Electra. And then pick up your official entry form for Buick Bonage Mileage Bonanza. You may win a Buick Electra, a Buick Sabre, a trip to Hollywood, or over 1,000 other prizes. Visit Troy Buick. Take a test ride in Z-Car Buick 59. Z-Car, priced within your budget, within your reach, and then enter Buick's Bonage Mileage Bonanza and win. And while you're at Troy Buick, don't forget to inspect the 59 Opal, Europe's most distinguished economy car. Featured at Troy Buick, that's Troy Buick at 2781 6th Avenue, Troy. Open daily till 9, Saturday till 5 p.m. And drive... To arrive alive. Here now is the rundown on the game for the Yankees. Three runs, eight hits, no errors. For the Red Sox, two runs on just two hits. They played errorless ball also. As we mentioned earlier, Bob Turley went all the way to win it. His first win, naturally. Adding on to another good year. We see for him by the way he started off this season. He fine style with a two-hitter. Yogi Berra did his catching. Tom Brewer also pitched well. He scattered eight hits. One of them, however, was a big one. That one in the eighth inning with one out when Norm Seaman rammed one into the stands, providing the margin of victory. Once again, for the Yanks, three runs, eight hits, no errors. For the Boston Red Sox, two runs, two hits, and no errors. Turley the winner, Brewer the loser, Siebert a homer in the eighth with no one on. In uh, other scores today, at the end of six innings, it is a four to three game. Chicago over Detroit. Dick Donovan versus Frank Larry in that. Norm Cash, a home run for Chicago in the first with one on his first. Eddie Yost for Detroit in the fifth with the bases empty, his first. The rest of the American League schedule, Cleveland at Kansas City, a single encounter, and Boston at Washington, a double bill, both postponed because of the bad weather. In the National League, two games postponed because of the bad weather there, a doubleheader, Cincinnati at Philadelphia, and Milwaukee and Pittsburgh, a single encounter. A four-inning score at the end of that time... San Francisco and St. Louis all knotted up at three apiece. Mike McCormick against Wilmer Mizell. And the only other game going on at the end of six innings with Sandy Koufax for Los Angeles against Taylor Phillips for Chicago. It's three to two, Chicago over Los Angeles. That's it in the sports roundup. Baseball roundup was presented by Troy Buick. Remember, there is no walking home when you drive a national bonded warranty used car from Troy Buick's used car branch.